Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to everyone. I'm Dr. Stephen Scheinman, President and Dean. Last time I was in this venue, it was for a concert by Willie Nelson and Van Morrison. This class probably, if they know of them at all, think of them as classical music. I hope that today's event will prove even more exciting than that was. On behalf of Geisinger Commonwealth's Board of Directors and the Chair of our Board, Ms. Virginia McGregor, the faculty, the staff, and our students, I thank you for joining us for this white coat ceremony for the Class of 2025. as we welcome the members of Geisinger Commonwealth's newest class to the profession of medicine. You are now the 13th class of medical students at Geisinger Commonwealth. I'd like to start by recognizing the families of our incoming medical students. Will the parents of the members of the class please rise? Remain standing. I'd now like to ask the brothers and the sisters and other family members, please, to rise. You are all part of their success. Please be seated. I'm pleased to welcome the members of the community from this region of Pennsylvania who are with us today. Geisinger Commonwealth was founded by this community, and more than any other medical school, Geisinger Commonwealth is embraced by the community it serves. Thank you sincerely for your support. I'd also like to recognize the commitment and dedication of a group of talented people, Geisinger Commonwealth's faculty and staff. Thank you. I will now introduce the stage party. 
Please hold your applause until all of them are introduced, and I ask you each to stand as your name is called. Dr. Tanya Adonisio, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Our, speak our speaker today, Dr. John Farrell, you will hear additional information about him when he's presented as the Dr. Lester Sademan Memorial Lecturer today. Dr. Michelle Schmoody, Associate Dean for Admissions, Enrollment Management and Financial Aid, and Associate Professor. Angelica DeFreitas, a member of our class of 2022, who will introduce you to the Gold Humanism Honor Society. I somehow neglected to introduce Dr. Bruce Sademan, <laughs> representing the Sademan family, who will um, introduce the topic of the, um, of the Sademan lecture. Dr. Michael Ferraro, Associ Regional Associate Dean for our South Campus and Assistant Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and Dr. Shu Brichetti, Regional Associate Dean for the North Campus and Professor of Medicine. Now you may applaud. <laughs> Please indulge me now as I offer some reflections for the new members of the class of 2025. As with previous classes, just 24 of you come to Geisinger Commonwealth directly after receiving your bachelor's degree. That was routine when I went to medical school. It's now nationally fewer than half of medical students come straight from college, and in this case, fewer than a quarter. Most of you have spent time in graduate school or in the workforce. 17 of you already have a Geisinger Commonwealth degree as graduates of our Master's in Biomedical Sciences program. You have among you a forensic accountant for the FBI, an emergency medical technician, a nutrition and lifestyle consultant, an athletics trainer, an intern at the National Cancer Institute of the NIH, a telehealth technician, a sound technician and stagehand at Union House Theatre in Australia and the McGill Drama Festival in Canada, a pulmonary function technician, a lacrosse and basketball coach, a licensed pilot, a stage actor, a former executive, a tour guide for Buenos Aires, a graphic designer, a professional artist, a firefighter, a CPA, a rock climber, the founder and CEO of an ethnic community-based organization for refugees, a member of the Peace Corps who served in Paraguay, a member of the field teaching staff for the University of Massachusetts marching band, a scuba diver, a number of you who have performed service activities in countries including India, Nicaragua, Panama, China, Zambia, Paraguay, Italy, and Mexico. Dancers among you do Bhangra, Indian classical, and ballet. 28 of you have graduate degrees, and two have studied medicine in foreign countries. We also welcome a number of serious athletes, including one who completed the Boston Marathon and another with a first degree black belt. Don't mess with that one. Also, serious mus musicians, including a pianist, a saxophonist, accordionist, and several guitarists. And the youngest person to have matriculated at our medical school, who was graduated from college last year at the age of 17. Most of you speak another language. 69 of you speak another language. And 22 speak three languages. Six of you speak four languages. 24 of you are the first member of your family to go to college. Clearly, you all will have much to teach each other, well beyond what you will learn in class. Today, the faculty of Geisinger Commonwealth will cloak each of you with a white coat, a symbol of the professional obligation that you will bear proudly throughout your careers as physicians. There has never been a more exciting time to enter the medical profession. When I entered medical school more than 40 years ago, we could never have dreamed of targeted monoclonal therapy, molecular diagnostics, robotic surgery, computerized medical records, pharmacogenomics, 
cancer immunotherapy, fetal surgery, magnetic resonance imaging, or the many other exciting tools that we take for granted now. We certainly never could have imagined that the world could develop in, the, in a matter of months vaccines to, to fight a global pandemic. And since the pace of medical discovery continues to accelerate, we cannot even begin to imagine the many new modalities that will change medical care during the course of your careers. And our curriculum, our new curriculum, for which you will be the first class to experience, acknowledges that. It focuses not on transmitting facts, but in training you to think like a physician, to ask the right questions, to know how to get the most up-to-date answers, all on behalf of your patients. And that is what needs to remain constant through all of this, your relationship with the patient. Many things in our exciting world of modern medicine conspire to separate you from them. These technical advances can tempt you to focus on the technique more than on the suffering patient. Technical advances have spawned subspecialization and fragmentation of care. These can distance you further from the person on the other end of your laparoscope. The burdens of documentation, approvals, the electronic record, and pressures to see more patients haven't helped either. This is where oaths come in. They remind you that through all of this, your relationship with the patient is central to your identity as a physician. All American medical schools administer a version of the Hippocratic Oath at commencement. The first time medical students were given an oath upon beginning medical school was only 1993 at the Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons where Dr. Arnold Gold was a pediatric neurologist on the faculty. It was through the active efforts of the Arnold P. Gold Foundation that the white coat ceremony is now takes place at most medical schools in the United States. The oath you are about to take is unique to Geisinger Commonwealth. It's pretty short, but it encompasses the key elements of being a great physician. That your patients will be your first concern. That you are studying for their sake. That you acknowledge your limits. That you be gracious to your teachers and colleagues. This is not intended to be self-serving on our part. It's rather a reflection of that element in Hippocrates' oath. That in your studies and in your life, you will manifest the dignity and integrity that your future patients will expect of you. That you practice humility. And the oath includes a paraphrase of the lovely phrase from the oath of Maimonides, may I never see in the patient anything but a fellow creature in pain. I encourage you to keep this oath in your hearts, to reread it at regular intervals during your odyssey through medical school, to keep in mind, to keep you in mind of your higher calling and your obligation to your future patients. I now call on Dr. Tanya Adonisio, Dean of Students, to come to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Scheinman, for those beautiful sentiments. We, and now you, as physicians, have a special obligation to keep our hearts and minds open and always to maintain our compassion, humility, and respect for others. And when Dr. Scheinman so eloquently described how to approach patients with dignity and humility, you may have been envisioning yourself doing so in some distant future Perhaps when you are a real doctor, perhaps you think that's when you'll begin upholding your oath. Don't make that mistake. Your education here at GCSOM will introduce you early this year to clinical settings. You will begin the hard work of upholding your oath now. Medical school will test you. 
Sometimes the sheer volume of knowledge you're expected to acquire will seem overwhelming. Sometimes you'll feel sleep deprived. Sometimes the combination of these will tempt you to jettison what you may think are the niceties, like patience and basic courtesy. You may think it's okay just this once or just until that exam is over to speak sharply to your colleagues and not be fully present with your patients. This is when you should remember the oath you take today. As you recite the words, you'll realize it's a promise you'll begin to keep right away. It is my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Bruce Sademan, who is here today representing the Sademan family. Dr. Sademan is a clinical associate professor of medicine. He and the entire Sademan family have been great friends of the school and longtime champions of local medical education. Please help me to welcome Dr. Sademan. Wow, this is so nice. I didn't get any applause when I picked up my white coat in the uh, dusty uh, bookstore at Temple University many years ago. Dean Scheinman, Dean Adnizio, Dr. Farrell, students, families. I was asked to briefly touch on the genesis of the Dr. Lester Sademan Memorial Lecture. As you have heard and will hear, as Dean Scheinman and Dean Adnizio have so eloquently expressed, your white coat is a powerful tool. It permits you to explore the details of your patient's illness. It compels you to be compassionate and empathetic. In addition, if you were to ask my siblings why we established a memorial lecture for my father during the white coat ceremony, it would also be that your white coat commits you to something that my father always felt so strongly about. That your white coat, that medicine, commits you to a life of learning. I clearly remember my father tearing and cutting out journal articles to review new therapeutics, new procedures, and difficult cases. I am my father's son. I find myself doing this nightly on a regular basis now sending myself articles electronically regarding new treatment and difficult problems that I encounter in my everyday oncology and hematology practice. As Dr. Scheinman mentioned, medicine has moved at an exponential pace. When I first started my career in oncology over 30 years ago, I could only dream of treating advanced cancer patients with non-chemotherapy regimens using targeted treatments monoclonal antibodies, immune therapy, that allow many people with advanced lung cancers, metastatic melanomas, advanced urothelial and breast cancers to have long-term survivals and even the potential of cure. We owe it to our patients to keep up to date in this vast and growing field of medicine. We owe this to ourselves and we owe it to our families. We are indebted to our physician scientist colleagues who from their work in the laboratory and clinical trials have allowed us to practice the best medicine possible. We are grateful and cannot forget the courageous patients who have taken part in basic clinical and scientific research. There are many reasons for my family's support of the Lester Sademan Memorial Lecture during the White Coat Ceremony, emphasizing a career committed to continuing your education will allow you to practice the best medicine possible as I believe my father did. My father would be and my siblings are proud to sponsor Dr. John Farrell who epitomizes the continued learning that I discussed as this year's Dr. Lester Sademan Memorial Lecturer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Seidman. In the words of Arnold P. Gold, founder of the White Coat Ceremony, the White Coat is personally placed on each student's shoulders by individuals who believe in the student's ability to carry on the noble tradition of doctoring. It is personally delivered gift of faith, confidence, and compassion. 
one of those individuals selected by the students as a role model of the profession is fittingly here to address the students on his perspective of humanism in medicine. John Scott Farrell, MD, is a graduate magna cum laude of the University of Scranton and a graduate cum laude of the Sidney Kimmel Medical College of Thomas Jefferson University. He completed a transitional year internship at Crozier Chester Medical Center and a residency in diagnostic radiology and fellowship in magnetic resonance imaging at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. He returned to Northeastern Pennsylvania in 2006 and practiced radiology in a private group for nearly 10 years. In 2016, he joined Geisinger as an associate in radiology in the Northeast platform. He specializes in breast imaging and breast interventional procedures. He's an assistant professor of radiology at Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine and the assistant chair of radiology in the Diagnostic Medicine Institute at Geisinger. He was twice the recipient of the North Campus Professor of the Year Award at GCSOM for the 2015-2016 and 2017-2018 academic years. In 2021, he was the recipient of the Leonard Toe Humanism in Medicine Faculty Award as well as the Outstanding Faculty Mentor Award. Please welcome the 2001 Sademan speaker, Dr. John Farrell. Thank you, Dr. Adnizio. Dean Scheidman, Dr. Sademan, members of the faculty and administration, family and friends, and our honored guests, the class of 2025. I am grateful for this opportunity to share a few words with you on this landmark occasion. I will confess, though, that ever since I received Dean Scheinman's very kind invitation to be your keynote speaker today, I struggled quite a bit. Over and over, I asked myself the question, what could I possibly say that would inspire our new class of medical students? What pearls of wisdom could I bestow upon you? And I'm going to be honest, I couldn't come up with a blessed thing. Nothing. So in my frustration, I basically concluded that this was going to be the shortest keynote address of any white coat ceremony in history. But then I realized something. I realized that maybe today is not about me inspiring you. Instead, maybe today is about recognizing and applauding and celebrating just how much you inspire me. And I want to highlight that after listening to Dean Scheinman's description of this class and all the things you've done. Uh, I want to have lunch with each one of you, uh, my treat, and I want to hear your stories. But it's true that each of you individually and collectively as a class are a tremendous inspiration to me, and not just me, but to everybody on this stage. Everybody in the Geisinger Commonwealth community and everybody in this amphitheater today. And I could tell you that you are the future of medicine and these are doctors of tomorrow, and all that is certainly true. But let's forget about the future for a moment. Let's talk about the present. Let's talk about today. Today, you receive and don your white coats for the first time. Notice, it's not at graduation where you get your white coat. It's today. You wear the physician's garment at the start of your journey. Why? Because the work you begin today is critically important. Today, you begin contributing to our mission to not just care for the sick, but to promote wellness in health in our communities. So today, we need you. We need your intellect, your energy, your new ideas, your spirit, your drive, your desire to serve others. Most importantly, we need your kindness. We need your curiosity. 
The poet Walt Whitman once said, be curious, not judgmental. I think it's safe to say that each of you has a good measure of curiosity in you at baseline. I mean, you've signed up for four more years of school, residency, throw in a fellowship maybe. All of this requires a lot of curiosity. Today, I invite you to allow your curiosity to grow beyond your academic pursuits. Allow yourself to be curious in all aspects of life. Be curious, especially when you may be inclined to judge. To judge another person or another person's words or actions. For when we judge, we change. Even our bodies change. We furrow our brows, we narrow our gaze, squint, and we let assumptions and biases cloud our thinking. So when we are tempted to judge, unfurl your brow, open your eyes wide. This simple gesture, this change in posture, enables you to be open and embrace new ideas and to simply learn. When we are curious, we cultivate a culture of openness a culture of acceptance, a culture of growth. Imagine a world where we replace judgment with curiosity. Be kind, be kind to everyone. Be especially kind to each other, your fellow classmates. As of today, you are officially in the business of caring. Begin by taking good care of each other. Build each other up, look out for each other, and you will not only survive, but excel during these next four years and beyond. Be kind to your patients. Ultimately, they are your best teachers. I'm pretty good, but your patients are your best teachers. And they need your kindness. They crave your kindness. And even though as a student, you may not be able to prescribe a treatment, you can freely dispense kindness to your patients and their families. And this kindness can manifest itself in countless ways. You can hold the hand of a person who might otherwise suffer alone. You can sit at a bedside and listen to a patient tell a story. You can be with a family member in the waiting room outside of an intensive care unit or an operating room as they wait to learn the condition of their loved one. This is true kindness. Most importantly, be kind to yourselves. You are human, we all are human. You're gonna do amazing things, you've already done amazing things, and there's more to come. But you will stumble, you will make mistakes. Try to forgive yourselves. Be kind to your bodies, be kind to your minds and to your spirits, and know that if you ever struggle, you are not alone, you have help. Be curious, be kind. Yes, there is a lot of work ahead of you. Your to-do list is long, challenges await, courses to take, tests, clerkships, boards, the list goes on. But remember, the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. Don't forget to enjoy the climb, the journey. Yes, the days are long, but trust me, the years are short. And the journey itself is nothing short of spectacular. Today we applaud you and we are grateful for you. Continue to inspire us and in turn, we will do our best to inspire you. I will leave you with a quote from another poet. His name is Bruce Springsteen. Bruce so eloquently writes, may your strength give us strength. May your faith give us faith. May your hope give us hope. May your love give us love. Thank you.
Dr. Farrell, on behalf of the Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, I wish to extend our appreciation for your inspiring remarks. Thank you for giving the Dr. Lester Seidman Memorial Lecture. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Michelle Schmoody for the presentation of the White Coat. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Farrell, for sharing your inspiring message. It is my pleasure to call the students forward to receive their white coats. Presenting the white coats for the class of 2025 will be Dr. Michael Ferraro and Dr. Shubra Shetty. Will the students of the class of 2025 please stand to receive their white coats and it come forward, which they are already doing. They have a very long walk. Please hold your applause until all of the student names have been called. begin the name presentation now. Kusuma Davi Alaparthi. Garrett Alexander II. Devin Appel. <music> Tiffany Ijama Adabonse. <music> Connor Whitley Bonta. Manish V. Bayana. Joanna Bernatovich. Dylan Thomas Bertovich. Tyler Matthew Belinsky. Anna Bondanese.
Alice L. Bouchard. Andy Long Bowie. We have Jenny Busarov. Richard Callum. McKinley Carey. Luke Ryan Cavanaugh. Laura A. Christman. Katarina Nicole Clegg. Mary Bell S. Daglin. Sydney Dana. Robert J. Davies, Jr. Michael B. DeHalt. Grant DeLosier. Dana S. Dissolve. Nithya Desha Schmuck. Lauren E. Donahoe. Seth Ellison. Melissa C. Endy. Paul Nathan Enoch. Connor Michael Euphemio. Jessica Lynn Finelli.
Carla Feely. Madison Frank. Nina Janusa. Madison B. Gladfelter. Maya Teresa Lander. Stephen Joseph Graham. Olivia Granja. Emily Groff. Caitlin Hogan Guiney. Yusuf Roslyn Hakim. Kaylee Siobhan Hamill. Rihanna Hanif. Joey Harmon. Michaela Hyde. Noah M. Hoffman. Benjamin Shijong Shung. Hayden P. Hallman. Jeffrey Wong. Madison T. Hurst. Catherine Jones. Kevna Joshi. (laughs) 
Andrew Jerglowitz. Kyle Kidd. Teresa Ann Ka. Patrick Kane Kowalski. Benjamin W. Kraus. Jaeger Kubakisha. Emily Coomer. Olivia C. Latanzi. Nayang Lee. Taylee Vicky Lynn Edward Liu Christopher Lloyd Julia Ma Christopher D. Manco Nicholas F. Michaelinus Alden Melito David Mix Jennifer Moritz Jason Munene Jeffrey Sanjay Moon
Alexis Naduka. Mi Nguyen. Joseph Pafume the third. Akshay C. Patel. Kathleen Patterson. Aaron Piavis. Gayatri S. Pele. Kelsey N. Plummer. Thomas Riley Potter. Evan Alfred Robinstein. Rita Ray. Robert Rinaldi the third. Laura Gabrielle Rodriguez. Sophie Rowe. Gina Rossi. Lauren C. Rao. Luke A. Schurz. Tyler J. Schubert. Sahaj S. Shah. Mara May Sheehan. Carly A. Sheffer.
Maz Siddiqui. Tyler Singer. Lindsay N. Smith. J. Sogama. Elena Lynn Staines. Jenna Saeed. Mari A. Tay. Mathura Telepan. Leah E. Thomas. Ryan J. Yolaberry. Sue Young Vandemark. Marissa J. Vaness. Adriana Vasquez. Frank L. Vasquez. Kevin Scott Vieira. Mitchell Warman. Lauren Yoakum. Ryan C. Young. Mackenzie Zellers.
David Zhang. and Tyler Zlupko. Let's have a round of applause for the class of 2025. Congratulations. I will now ask Dr. Scheinman to approach and administer the medical student oath. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schmoody, and congratulations to the class of 2025. I ask the students to join me in reciting Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine's oath. The audience will find the text on page seven of the program I don't need to ask the medical students to rise. Let us recite this oath in unison. As a physician in training, it will be my first concern, I will strengthen myself with the knowledge and compassion to care for them. 
I will acknowledge my limits, seeking help when needed. I will be gracious with my teachers and colleagues. I will manifest the dignity and integrity inherent in the noble profession to which I aspire. I will treat everyone thoughtfully and with respect. At all times, may I never see in the patient anything but a person in need. This oath I take freely upon my honor. Congratulations. Please be seated. Now please help me welcome Angelica de Freitas, a member of our class of 22. She will talk about the Gold Humanism Honor Society. The mission of the society is to honor medical students, residents, fellows, role model physician teachers, and others who demonstrate excellence in humanistic clinical care, leadership, compassion, and dedication to service. Angelica. Thank you, Dean Scheinman. Hello, and congratulations to Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine, class of 2025. My name is Angelica DeFreitas, and I'm a fourth year medical student and new student member of our institution's chapter of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. As such, I am excited to bring this nationally recognized organization to your attention at this very opportune moment of your journey through medicine. For many of you, this journey began years ago, planning out your course schedule, summer spent working, volunteering, doing research, and for some pursuing other degrees and even other careers before finally deciding on medicine. The journey has been long and challenging, and we are all so, so incredibly proud of all that you have already accomplished. But today marks the beginning of a new challenge marked in part by the receipt of your very first white coat. The tradition of the white coat ceremony first began in 1993 under the leadership of Dr. Arnold P. Gold, founder of the Gold Foundation, which serves to empower experts, leaders, and learners to come together to create systems and cultures that support humanistic care for all. Before this, medical students took the Hippocratic Oath at the end of their fourth year of medical training. Reasonably, Dr. Gold thought this was four years too late. So today, at the threshold of your career as a physician, you just took GCSOM's medical student version of the Hippocratic Oath and put on your white coat for the first time. This timing is intentional and is meant to emphasize the importance of compassionate, collaborative, and scientifically excellent care from your very first day of training. The Gold Foundation and its Humanism Honor Society are dedicated to keeping healthcare human. This tenet is not only essential to the Gold Foundation, but is also in line with the values of kindness, excellence, safety, learning, and innovation that are held by our institution. Thinking of kindness, it's easy to assume the instruction here is to be kind to patients, which, yes, is inextricably intertwined with patient-centered medicine. Often overlooked, however, is being kind to your fellow classmates, professors, all members of your healthcare team, and most importantly, being kind to yourself. Medical school is a challenge unlike anything I have experienced thus far. Efforts to balance classes, exams, leadership, extracurricular activities, self-care practices, personal and family obligations, the list goes on and on. They can feel overwhelming, and at times stress will definitely run high. Amid all of this, as you progress through your preclinical years, then to your clinical rotations, residency and beyond, may your white coat serve as a steadfast reminder of what you, your hard work is for, becoming an active agent in maintaining the human connection in healthcare. To do so, compassion, empathy, and kindness must be the hallmark of your everyday interactions and clinical practice. 
I look forward to seeing you grow into your new role as members of the future of healthcare over the next four years. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much, Angelica, for that wisdom. Allow me first to say, welcome to the profession of medicine. You all look great in your new white coats. And um, I recognize that I am the last thing standing between you and giving your family the opportunity to give you a real tight hug. But after nearly a decade of leading this school, of welcoming new classes at white coat ceremony and handing, having handed out every MD degree in the history of the school, this will be the last white coat ceremony over which I preside, and so I hope you will allow me an indulgence of a few additional words. You have already begun the hard work of becoming a doctor. It involves learning a lot of facts Yes, but those are not nearly as important as learning how to gather and process information, how to think like a doctor, how to become a lifelong learner. Our new curriculum has you working with patients early on, so these white coats will soon be your work clothes. But they can be a danger, too. Some doctors succumb to the temptation to think of their white coat as a shield or a barrier or a status symbol. Taking care of patients is a frightening thing. The responsibility is intimidating, but more than that, the patient's illness is a frightening thing. It reminds you that you are vulnerable, that you are mortal. If you are not grounded and mature and comfortable with your own mortality, it's hard to be there for your patients as you will need to be. That's a lot to expect, and it is something that the right white coat really doesn't help with. Some doctors create a distance between themselves and the patients as a defense mechanism. They stand at the foot of the bed using the long Latin terms that we will teach you, talking about the patient in the third person, wearing their white coat proudly, as if it says to the patient that you were above them, as if it says that you are safe from becoming like that patient. You won't be one of those doctors. You were selected from a large pool on the basis of not just your academic excellence, but more importantly, your experiences and your character. And the values of Geisinger Commonwealth, which are woven into our curriculum, are focused on the patient, on caring. You will be as well. You will come to see this white coat not as a symbol of status, but as a reminder that your role is one of service to the community and to your patients. In that spirit, you should wear it very proudly. So, to Geisinger Commonwealth's class of 2025, I offer with excitement my sincere welcome to Geisinger Commonwealth and to the medical profession. To the audience, I ask that you remain seated while our students in the stage party exit. Thank you.